in the early history of Flint, Michigan, about the only thing we made here was wagons at the Flint Wagon Works in about 1880. As a response to Henry Ford's new invention, the horseless carriage, William C. Durant and his good friend J. Dallas Dort took advantage of the industrialized Flint, Michigan and built the very first Buick plant in about 1908. They swarmed by the thousands for these new jobs, but even with the addition of the new Chevrolet plant in 1913, line workers found their jobs very difficult and often dangerous. So as a result of these poor work conditions, the Flint sit-down strike commenced in 1937. And though it began peacefully, picketers soon clashed with National Guard troops as well as Flint City Police and State Police. The end result of this 44-day strike was the formation of the United Auto Workers as sole arbitrators between the workers and General Motors. Another benefit was not only a prosperous Flint, but also a very prosperous General Motors. Which brings us to the Flint, Michigan of today. The downtown area has gone through many changes over the past several years. Fewer cars, fewer people. Yet many of the downtown business landmarks and churches still remain. And like every other great community, Flint has its share of affluent neighborhoods and sprawling castles. But I think the thing that sets Flint apart from most Rust Belt cities is its beautiful cultural center. It's kept alive by its multicultural roots and rich history that developed Flint in the first place. Many of the founding fathers of both Flint and General Motors have lent their names to these jewels that decorate the cultural center itself. Names like Charles Stuart Mott and Louis Chevrolet can be seen almost everywhere. But while great companies and factories can build great cities, they can also be their downfall. The collateral damage suffered when General Motors closed many of its plants in Flint was instant and devastating. It wasn't just the line workers who were affected, it was the entire city. Businesses who depended upon GM for their livelihoods were hit also. Neighborhood after neighborhood collapsed as the workers left the city to find other employment. And as more people left, schools began to close. So where does it leave our people in our city? Well, as Dort and Durand have seen as they stand guard in Carriage Town, new schools have emerged, new centers of higher learning erupting out of the ashes of destruction. Perhaps one of these mines from one of these schools will develop a way to bring people back to our city again. <laughs>